is Izzy back again to talk about the ending of Mass Effect 3 with you this time around. In the Mass Effect 3 review that we had put out a couple of weeks ago, I had mentioned that we would be covering the ending on its own separate video, along with full-fledged spoilers of random things that I want to talk about, because I can talk about random things because I'm the host and I'm cool like that. Before we begin, I want to lay down a few ground rules slash points. Point slash rule number one, I completely support everybody's right to their own opinion. I have my opinion, you have your own opinion, my cat probably has her own opinion, so by all means, share your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's get a conversation going. I encourage healthy debate. Bouncing off of that point, rule slash point number two, in the healthy debate, let's make sure we keep it healthy and be biffles and not call each other names. You can't really make friends if you're calling the person next to you a jerk. So let's respect everybody's right to their own opinion and again, have a healthy and civil debate. And rule slash point number three, and the most important one, no touching of the hair in the face. If you can call out what movie I'm quoting, so let's cover the differing theories and opinions of the game. On one hand, you have the can people in the corner for Bioware saying, Awesome ending! You guys have full rights to the however you choose to do the ending. It's great, fabulous, groovy. Then you have what I call the ending activists, who are the people who are saying, This is the worst thing you've ever done to me, Bioware. How could you possibly make the same ending seven times I've lost count over it? Deus Ex, I'm going to call the FTC and send angry cupcakes at you. And then you have people walking that fine middle line. I kind of like to lump the indoctrination theorists smack dab in that gray area. I can't figure out which side they're on. If you can, please let me know because there are so many various opinions going on. I can't possibly keep track of them all. So where do I fit into, yay, good ending, ah, bad ending, I am smack dab in the middle. Um, surprisingly, after about a month of the game being released, I have no particularly strong feelings one way or another. Um, leading up to the game, as I had said in my review, I was very anxious. It was very emotional for me to get to the end of my shepherd's journey. Um, you know, building up her relationships and everything. It was it was very hard. And watching the ending, as I was going through it before, because I managed to not spoil the ending for myself. I managed to stay away from the arguments and block all that out. Unlike some episodes of Walking Dead, thanks Facebook friends who like to ruin my favorite TV shows for me. Anywho, going back to happy times. Um, I managed to keep myself completely virgin to the ending. Um, and as I went through it, I was kind of confused, but I liked it at the same time. I liked the Stargazer sequence with the old man and, and the grandkid. I thought that was pretty cool. I liked the music at the ending. Um, I was very torn over what decision I was going to choose. Um, if you're wondering, I did choose to control the Reapers because it was blue, which symbolized Paragon, and I played as Paragon, and I'm a good person, so I thought, okay, blue. Little did I know. It wouldn't make a difference. Um, even though, apparently, if you pick the renegade color, which is to destroy the Reapers, that's more the right choice if you have a 5,000% preparedness level. But that's that's a different story. Um, so th that was my response while playing. When it ended, I was kind of like, what's everybody freaking out about? And then I went onto YouTube and realized that there was no difference in the endings. Um, and I began to read the ending activists' viewpoints um, on how they felt jipped out that Bioware had promised them multiple endings depending on how they chose to lead their shep lead their shepherd's journeys, and that didn't happen. I can completely understand why people are throwing a fit. Complaining to the FTC? Mm, not so much. Sending Bioware three different colored cupcakes that all taste the same? That was kind of funny, and I, you know, hey, if you want to do that, you're not hurting anybody. The Child's Play charity event, hmm, still helps sick kids, so whatever, I don't really have any feelings on that. So I am just kind of in the middle. I'm not, I'm not angry about it. I'm not saying it was the greatest ending ever. I understand that some people are saying Bioware controlled the beginning, the middle, and the end of the series. 
And I get that. And I'm trying to figure, is Bioware trying to say that ultimately, no matter how you led your shepherd's life, your shepherd is going to come to the same exact fate as everyone else's? It was this supposed to be shepherd's fate. I'm trying to think of it from a semi-artistic, deep, psychological level. And then you have that in the middle, I, I think it's in the middle, the indoctrination theory, which basically if you haven't researched the indoctrination theory, it's saying that from the time that Shepard hits the conduit and Harbinger shooting laser beams at her, um, she is basically under the Reaper's control. The whole sequence with her, Hackett, uh, uh, not Hackett, um, Admiral Anderson and the Elusive Man is an internal battle. Um, it's, it's a mental battle for her with the Reapers of what decision is she going to make. And if you watch that whole sequence, you're like, this is really weird. I mean, first of all, she's half dead. She's like melted into her own suit. She's just kind of limping along. How did Anderson get up here? Where did the elusive man come from? And you see Shepard struggling and then she shoots Anderson and that's not the way you keep a friendship going. And it's just she's getting these weird headaches, the screen gets foggy, she's not sounding herself, and then you shoot the elusive man, Anderson dies, you go up to the console system, Hackett's saying, boo, you're not doing the right thing, it's not working. Shepard, like, passes out on, on the floor, and then is magically lifted into a space thing with Glowy Kid. And suddenly she goes from looking dead to, hey, let's have a conversation. You want a beer, kid? What's up with the Reapers? Like, suddenly, it's like someone gave her a Tylenol and, and a Red Bull, and she's okay. Temporarily. And then she blows things up. But, I mean, she pretty much seems like she passes out. I thought she died. And then when she went up, I was like, really? You just passed out. How do you have the stamina to get up and go talk to Ghost Kid? And you're not like, hey, why are you translucent? It makes sense to me, the, the indoctrination theory, that it's kind of in her head. She's being controlled. She's being manipulated. It explains away why, the, well, not explains away, but it gives you more insight into the whole sequence with the Normandy crew taking off and the possibility that the squad mates who were with you may have suddenly ended up on the Normandy and on the jungle planet with Joker and Edie. Kind of makes it more forgivable um, still not completely sure on how I feel about that from an artistic perspective. It does seem pretty intelligent in its own way. Still leaves you kind of... Mm. There is one thing that I'm actually passionate about with the ending in reading all the different viewpoints and the articles and watching all the videos, and I fully support you challenging me on this. I've read some viewpoints where people say, Shepard shouldn't have died at the end. Oh my god, it's awful that Shepard died at the end. I completely disagree with you on that one. <laughs> Sorry guys, I went into Mass Effect 3 going, of course, Shepard's going to die. It's the only way the series can end is with her dying. She has cheated death about a thousand times over previously, and literally at the beginning of Mass Effect 2, her luck's gonna run out at some point. I mean, you go up to the conduit and Harbinger, and this minute Harbinger starts shooting at you, you're like, oh my god, this thing's massive. How am I even going to make it to the conduit? And I mean, you pretty much kind of just squidge by in there, and it's pretty creepy and dark. I mean, I've read some people saying, ah, Shepard was supposed to live. That one doesn't make sense to me. That is way too fairy tale of an ending, and uh, honestly, had Bioware ended it saying, oh, in the meant multiple endings, or one ending, saying, oh, Shepard lived, that's when I would have been mad as a fan. I would have been like, no, Shepard is supposed to die. So, I mean, again, you're more than welcome to challenge me on it. I'm just saying, in order for Shepard to be a true hero, she had to die. And I mean, yes, there is that hidden ending where if you get the the all stuff correct you get that 20 something odd clip of the n7 figure taking a deep breath that is fine by me i actually like the way that was done because bioware didn't hand it all away on a silver platter they kind of just like teased you they were like oh maybe it's shepherd 
We don't know. Could have been James. Nobody paid too much attention to him during the game. So, just saying. Some other points. And it's a teeny, eeny, weeny, eeny, weeny, eeny, weeny gripe. Why couldn't I romance James? Seriously, he was hot for me from the very get-go of the game. I got to see him do pull-ups. That was awesome. We punched each other in the face. Nothing says true love like punching each other in the face. That's how true love is for me anyway. But seriously, for those of you who know my track record, I'm in love with Garrus. I actually considered cheating on Garrus with James. And then I found out I couldn't romance him. And if I didn't, well, I, I started by not importing my Mass Effect character from previous games. You can't romance Garrus if you haven't previously romanced Garrus. So guess who ended up very lonely at the, Mass, at the end of Mass Effect 3? This chick. I'm not okay with that. I was very sad going into the final ending sequence. N unromanced. Ugh. I'm still talking about that one in therapy sessions. Alright, so it's time to wrap up this video now that I've rambled on long enough. I hope by now you figured out what I'm going to say. I'll let you think about it. Let you think about it. I'll let you call it out like a, uh, like a kid's show. What was that? Yes, kids, follow us on Facebook and Twitter if you're not already. And if you have any friends, family members, or cats who you think would like Video Girls, send them our way. The bigger the community we build, the more we can post for you, the more there is for you. And just make sure you keep checking back to videogirls.com, so subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and let's make this an awesome place to be. So as usual, guys, share your comments below, and we'll talk to you soon.